Number one, evaluate. Evaluate our lives. Evaluate, number one, what we believe. What do we believe and why we believe it? And evaluate it. Some of us believe it simply because we've been taught. We've never researched it ourselves, never tried to find these things out. And here's the deal. God is not afraid of your questions. Find out what you believe because the only faith worth passing on, in my opinion, is a genuine faith. Because if you try to pass on something you really don't believe in, the kids aren't going to catch it. They're not going to believe it. They're going to see that, that you're a hypocrite. And they may find faith on their own. I pr praise God they, if they do. But we need to evaluate what we really believe and why we believe it. When you start reading books, evaluate these things, get in the word of God, pray, ask God for, for understanding of what you believe. I remember the story where this man had a demon possessed son, I think it's in Mark. He brought his son to, to the disciples to heal, be healed and they couldn't heal him. Then the disciples brought him to Jesus and they were like, why can you, why can you heal? And Jesus tells them because this comes through fasting and praying. But when Jesus asked the man himself, do you believe? The man responded, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah, I believe, but help me with the part I don't believe. And all of us have that. And it's okay to have some doubt. God is not afraid of our doubts. So evaluate what you believe. Seek to know this God who loves you and gave himself for you and grow deeper in your faith. So it'll be a genuine faith. So evaluate what you believe. Number two, evaluate how you live, how you spend your money, your, your time and your treasures. What do you do? Because that speaks a lot. How am I spending my time? What things are I, am I bringing into my home and my life that are not... Don't go with what God would want. What am I watching? What am I listening to? What kind of environment am I creating in my home? Does it honor God? Because that's what our kids see. And I don't know about you, but how come your kids hear and see all the stuff you don't want them to hear and see? I mean, the stuff you tell them, they ain't hear. I ain't hear you tell me to clean my room. I ain't hear you tell me to put the dishes away. But every other thing they hear, they hear all the conversations you don't want them to hear. But the point is this, they're watching. They're watching your life. And I'm not saying you have to be perfect, because here's the deal. Real parents aren't perfect, and perfect parents aren't real. If I said it the right way. <laughs> but the truth is, none of us are perfect. And we know that. They know that. So let's stop trying to be that, even when it comes to our faith. I'm, I'm a, I've been a past youth pastor, kids pastor. I'm an ordained minister. My wife was the Bible president at school. We know our word. We grew up in church. But we're not perfect, and even when it comes to our faith. But evaluate what things you're allowing in your home. And even ask God, God, search my heart. Uh, are there things that are unpleasing to you? Psalm 139, ask God to search your heart. How are you spending your time and your treasure? Where are you putting your money? Where are you putting your resources? Do they reflect a follower of Christ or does it reflect just a person who just checked the box? And again, I, I wanna have compassion here, but if we're trying to pass on the faith to the next generation, we gotta be willing to evaluate ourselves. I just went to the dentist and I hadn't been to the dentist in about a year. And I was kind of scared going to the dentist, figuring out, hey, what's going on? But Hey, they had to do evaluation. When they do that little thing where they click your, 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 your gums and they give you the numbers, one, two, three, and four, four is the worst. I'm like, man, I don't want no four, I don't want no fours. Please don't tell me no fours. But do I want them not to tell me a four, even though it's a four? I want them to tell me the four so I know it's a four so we can work on fixing the problem. True, it's hard, but evaluate yourself, what you believe and what you do, how you spend your, your time and your treasures, because that speaks volumes about who we are and what, what faith we have. Again, no one's perfect. No one's asking to be perfect. But be honest about that. And I would say thirdly in evaluating, evaluate what you say to your children and how you talk to your children. Again, that's evaluate all, just ourselves. And if we've fallen short in some areas, if we need to make some changes, hey, be transparent about that. You know, hey, mom and dad did this. We shouldn't have been doing this. Mom and dad, we've been watching these shows. We've been putting this on. We've been subscribing to this. We've been putting our money in place that we shouldn't be. Hey, be honest with them. Maybe you had a divorce. Maybe things didn't work out in your first marriage. Don't sweep that under the rug. Your kids know. Maybe you had a baby out of wedlock. You weren't married when they were born. Hey, don't sweep it under the rug. They can do math. They know these things. Be real, because guess what? There's forgiveness. If you've been divorced, if you had a baby before you're married, God God will forgive you. And I want our kids to see that in our faith, in our, our life. They listen, we make mistakes. And even when the fact that we have to apologize to our kids at times for bad choices we made. And guess what? God forgives me too. And I can forgive you. You can forgive me. And it's being genuine and being faithful. So again, evaluate how you communicate with your kids and what you communicate with the kids. So number one, evaluate.